Hello everyone, my name is Danica Joan and I'm here to lead another Facebook Live around uh, for Custody Matters. Uh, our, our topic today is around par parallel parenting. Um, parallel parenting is quite different from co-parenting. When you think about it, like ultimately our goal is to co-parent, but a lot of times we don't aren't able to start out uh, in the the most healthy of co-parenting. So, what in a, in the perfect world, what would co-parenting look like? Well, let's see. It would be when is a regular conversation can be had without any kind of emotional hook between two parents in regards to the best interest of their child. Very much co-parenting co is healthy communication, much like when in the intact family where the both parents work out uh, and negotiate situations that one parent has the other parents back and vice versa. That would be in the perfect world. However, when dealing with the initial stages of shifting to a co-parenting situation, sometimes that's just not so because there's a lot of emotion, a lot of emotional uh, things that we get hooked by. And a lot of times it there is just really no possibility of good communication. So as mediators, a lot of times we work with these parents. We, they usually they like to stay in separate rooms so that they can freely communicate. And then we come up with a plan. We can we try to figure out what it is that is exactly what's going to work, what's not going to work. And in a parallel parenting situation, the the difference is is there's is there everything has to be specific high specificity in regards to the parenting plan. Like we're not going to just leave things up to chance at all. It, we're going to put things, measures in place such that like um, one parent might be more, more um, we, the, we might give the other parent the right to have ultimate authority over medical concerns. And then we might give the other parent ultimate authority around educational concerns. And it's not just this all-inclusive, you know, just absolute kind of thing. I mean, it really has to be specific. We really have to look at what does it really look like in, um, you know, in a, in a working situation. So specificity, and this can be very difficult, especially when the parents are, there is no real healthy communication. And that's where mediators can really work out negotiating or even like um, as, a, as a divorce and custody coach, that's something that I work with clients on to try to figure out, you know, what is it? What so, what, what if? You know, so, okay, we, we allow the other parent or you can make these decisions. Then we have to really, really be paying attention to, okay, so what if? Um, and then we put measures in place that, okay, so if this happens, then the default action is this. Now, a, a child can really thrive in a parallel parenting situation because think about it. If there is no communication, there's no there's no positive communication uh, where the parents are forced to communicate to hash things out, then the child is exposed to hostility, conflict, insults, just like they're they're caught in the trapped in the middle of this battle zone. And uh, because they haven't set up any ground rules as far as what's going to happen um, specifically. But when, but if we take that same child and put them in and structure a parallel parenting structure around the communication, then, you know, it doesn't really matter that the parents do not like each other because that, that is something the communication has been eliminated for the most part. So the benefits of parenting, of parallel parenting, it protects the child's relationship with both parents while shielding them from the parental conflict. conflict. 
uh, although parallel parenting is not, you know, it's not really something that's good for high conflict so much, like maybe there was domestic violence or, or there is a concern for the safety of the child, then parallel parenting may not necessarily be um, the, the, the perfect uh, solution for those situations. However, sometimes the conflict, sometimes the, the abuse and, and the conflict allegations are end up being part of that stirring up of the initial divorce custody situation. So it's, it's not so much a concern down the road. Now, can parallel parenting, does it have to stay parallel parenting uh, where parents do not communicate, they're just their um, minimal contact and, and all that? No, it doesn't have to be. I think over time, when, when nobody has you know, stepped over the boundaries and stuff over time, then there's a little bit of trust that starts coming into play. And then the parents start feeling, well, okay, um, you know, my hurt has been, has subsided, my anger, my bitterness, and, and that person is not stepping over their boundaries. So maybe we can inch towards more of a co-parenting kind of relationship. So, um so like, let's see logistics a lot of times in the log the logistics have to be set up really tight and understand that parenting plans can be a living document so for instance you set it up as a parent uh, par parallel parenting plan that's highly detailed considering every little possible um, variants in in the you know of all the what ifs that could happen. So you put that up in, into place, and and that might be in place for I don't know two three years maybe maybe till the child hits kindergarten, and then understanding that that plan is not necessarily going to be practical as the child starts school. And even from the child starting in kindergarten to the child moving up to middle school, that same plan, the, the family might outgrow that plan. So really paying attention to the possibilities of, of growth and evolution in your parenting situation really, really makes a big difference. Okay. And who can help you with that? A lot of times uh, custody or divorce coaches can help you with that because unlike uh, mental health count, you know, that they deal with the, the emotional issues that a pa the parent is experiencing and, and so forth and relationship kind of things, a coach can actually help you with dealing with, okay, so what are the legal ramifications? The, um, so they're giving you guidance in, in regards to the, the possibilities of um, the legal ramifications, not, not just the emotional ramifications of dealing with a, a co-parenting kind of situation. And of course, there is the possibility of setting up an, a, a meeting and saying, okay, so we're going to bring in this mediator or this coach, we're going to bring them in, and we're going to have our annual meeting uh, to, to figure out what works and what doesn't work, and how are we going to change the, the, the how are we going to, what's going to, what's it going to look like over the next year or the next two years? And um, by taking really taking action, preemptive you know, um, action in being proactive in creating the future of your family will make a huge difference because it, it really keeps the, you know, keeps the hostility and all the drama away from the child so the child is not uh, hurt and, um, and feeling like they're having to strategize and things like that. I mean, because understand that, that if we are being a bully or, we, or we're experiencing that kind of bully relationship between um, our co-parent, that's exactly what we're, 
we're our child is picking up on is how to be a bully or how to be um you know how to deal with those kind of behaviors and you know that's something where where hopefully you know most most loving parents they try to protect their child from the bully or teach their child how to how to not be a bully in school but when it, the example's being shown in your own home then that's something to definitely take note of as far as creating the future of your your child's um, your child's future and after all we are creating future adults and we don't want to create adult children um, meaning that children adult children who don't necessarily have the coping skills or the possibility of healthy relationship skills for their future. So uh, that is all I wanted to say today. If you have any questions, any concerns, you can always private message me uh, and we can talk about your case one-on-one -on -one and, um, and go from there. But um, I am here for you. So I hope that everything goes well for you and I will be uh, in the chat.